Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about control systems topics and we continue with the determination of our transfer function for a, from a given body diagram or body plot. Then this is our second example. What is given? What is the situation? Now in the next uh, slide we'll see that the body plot of a system is given as shown here we have the gain again and we have the phase plot. What we would like to know is the determine the transfer function of this system using this body plot. Okay, let me zoom in in this body diagram for the phase and for the gain only. So if I make a full screen picture of this, what you see is what you recognize that there are several key points what we are, uh, can see. What we can see is the gain starts at 40 dB for very low frequencies. In this case, we will see that it's 10 to the power minus 2, but it is just actually very low so for zero radians per second this is also 40 db so you can assume that you can also see that the gain is decreasing at some frequency so it starts to decrease at some frequency which is maybe around there and it will start to decrease and keep decreasing and at some point it will catch up so you will have a positive gain or you will have a gain which is not really decreasing as fast as actually in the first case and then it will start again to decrease and it will keep decreasing for larger frequencies and the phase will follow actually what's happening here in the gain so if you start for example at very low frequencies you will see that this actually is zero degrees and if you move on with your plot for your frequency you will see that the phase will be negative at this frequency for example is more minus 45 degrees and it will then become almost minus 70 degrees here maybe minus 75 degrees and then it will start to increase and then approach almost again minus 45 degrees and then again it will decrease and approach as a total to minus 90 degrees and what we did in the previous video and we will also do that here we will use asymptotic lines to determine our uh, key elements from our body diagram because for our transfer function we need our dc gain if it is of course uh, present in our system because that can be of course uh, decreasing or increasing uh, for uh, very low frequencies so you might not have a horizontal line but this time we have a horizontal line so there is a dc gain and we would like to know our break frequency. So we would like to know what are the break frequencies. So I see some somewhere here and I see also somewhere here because you will see a change in the slope and also here at this frequency. So we would like to know that in a precise way. So what I did, what I first will do, first step is determine or draw the tangent line for my DC game. That's actually our first step. So let's do that. So that's actually this graph here or my line here red line that will determine now my tangent line for my gain in this region i have also a tangent line i can place a tangent line here and that will make an intersection with this red line and that will give me a very good estimate of my break frequency here that will be my first break frequency or corner frequency so if i now draw that or place the tangent line here I will get this line the blue line and that blue line will make now with this red line an intersection here and if I go down I see this 10 to the power 0 which is actually just one radius per second so what you see is there is a break frequency at one radius per second and this is a pole of course why because the gain is now decreasing due to this and the phase is negative so you will see that there is a confirmation also by the phase each pole will decrease your gain and it also will contribute a negative phase so you will actually see this so you can make this as the first pole we will summarize this in the, at the end so i will leave it here now we will now move to the second part of our diagram which you see in, a, in our magnitude what you see is that the gain is starting to catch up but it will again start to decrease very sh uh, very shortly so what you see is that this is very hard to, to place a tangent line here so instead of a tangent line you will like look actually at the point where there is an optimum uh, slope 
of this region. So that is also called inclination point. So if I would like to know at what point I have to place a tangent line, that will be the inclination point of this region. So I've chosen at this point. So if I now make the graph here, you will see that the graph will make a tangent of, or, the, or the, uh, the tangent line will be this red line. So this red line and this blue line will make a new interaction point here, which is now at 10 to the power 1 times 2, because this is just 1 times 10 to the power 1, and it's 2 times 10 to the power 1, and this will be, of course, 3 times, 4 times, etc. But this is now 2, that will be actually 20, because this 10 to the power 1 is 10 times 2 is 20. So 20 radians per second will be my next break frequency or corner frequency. That is, in this case, the zero. Why? Because the zero will make the gain positive, so it will increase the gain, and it will also make the phase more positive. So, since I had a pole at the first break frequency that will cause the uh, phase decrease more negative, and now this will catch up and it will increase or make it more, less negative. So, I see already that this must be a zero. This is now for the second break frequency. Now for the next break frequency, I see that there is a region here where I can place my uh, tangent line. And it is now very easy to place here because this is, has a very constant slope. So if I now place the tangent line for this region, which is this one, and if I have now this blue line and this red line, I see another intersection point here which is approximately at 10 to the power 2, which is 100 radians per second. And again, this is a pole. Why? It will decrease the gain, it will cause the gain to decrease, and it will cause the phase to be more negative, and it is also confirmed by my phase plot. So we have now determined actually our three break frequencies. This is the pole, this is the zero, and this is another pole. So pole 1, pole 2, and one zero and we have a DC gain of 40 dBs. Okay, let me use this information in our next slide. So we will continue with our transfer function. So let me write down what the DC gain is. DC gain is here 40, so let me write it down. So it is now gain is 40. So the gain is 40 dBs which is of course in scalar form 10 to the power 40 divided by 20, which is a very familiar formula. And this will result in 10 to the power 2, which is our DC gain. So I will define this as KDC and I will use that in the formula for our transfer function. And the phase here is, as I see also in my plot, the phase is zero de degrees. This will of course mean that our 100 here is not minus 100 because there is a there is a zero degrees phase shift. If this is, for example, minus 108 degrees, I will have, of course, a sine inversion. So this is, of course, uh, important to, to consider if you have, of course, your DC gain at the correct sign. Now for our uh, break frequency, this is the first break frequency. Let me write it down. So this is our first break frequency. So let me do that in, in red. So this is our omega P1. This one was the omega Z. So it is actually our zero. So it is actually here. So omega zero, which is just our zero. And I have again an omega P2 here, which is actually this one. Now, if I now continue with my uh, omega P1, P2, and Z, and of course use it in the transfer function, what we have is then following. So omega P1 will be, will be 10 to the power 0 radians per second, which is just, of course, 1 radians per second in a simplified form. And this is our pole 1, the first pole. Pole 1. And the second one, which is 10 to the power 2 radians per second, which is of course 100. So 100 radians per second is our second pole, 
and this is now pole two. Okay, for our zero, I see this is 10 to the power one times, of course, two, because it is in the second uh, form. So we will have now two times 10 to the power one radians per second. And this will result in 20. 20 radians per second. And this is my zero. I'm now almost done and I can now set up actually my transfer function, just substitute the uh, values of the, for, the K, for the DC gain for the pole one and pole two and the zero. So we will now look at the uh, situation for the transfer function. So let's move on. So what would you have is a transfer function in general form, which is of course this, the G is equal to the KDC, what we have now, times the product of the zeros for the numerator, which is just of course one, so this will be S divided by omega Z plus one. That's actually the form we've also used in the previous video. And then in the denominator, we will get the product of the poles in this same format. So you will have the S divided by omega P1 plus one and the similar form S divided by omega P2 plus one. Now let's me, let me substitute the value. So I will use another color. Let me do it in blue so I can make this clear. So we have now the G S that will be 10 to the power two or just 100 times S divided by 20 plus one, just in parentheses, and then S divided by one for the first pole plus one, and then S divided by 100 plus one. Okay, this is our, of course, our transfer function. It is not really that handy written here, so we can simplify this. What we can do, as we did also in the previous video, we can multiply uh, the denominator and the numerator by a factor so that this will be, of course, much more uh, readable. So what you always want to do is you will like to isolate the parameter S. So we will like to have the S as a, with, a, with a coefficient of one. This is already done, but this has a coefficient of 100, one divided by 100 and this has a one divided by 20. So it is all uh, in a not in the right format. So what you can do is you can now multiply the numerator and denominator by 20. So I will get rid of this 20 here. So we will have the following. That's our first step. So G S will be 10 to the power two times. This will be S and then plus 20. So I will multiply by 20 the numerator. And I will keep the first term in the denominator as it is. So it is S plus one. So it's already in the right format, but this will be now multiplied by 20. So you will actually choose one of the terms. So you don't do 20 times each term in here and 20 times each term there. there. That does not the correct way. So you will have now 20 divided by 100. It will be, of course, uh, the first one will be 20 divided by 100 will be one over five. So you will have S divided by five and then times of plus, I mean, 20. Now I will now also have to get rid of this five, but I will like to keep this here. So I will multiply that numerator and the denominator by five, but I will use that five here. So I will have five times 100 will be 500. So I will have this 100, so 10 to the power of two times five, and then S plus 20. So I will keep it, uh, for the numerators of this and s plus one is also fine but this will be s because it will now multiply by five and this will be 100 and this is actually the the way i actually want to see my transfer function in a in a nice way so i can see directly this is the zero there's these are the two poles and this is my gain this is not my dc gain remember this is my gain for a specific frequency if you want the DC gain, this is shown here. So this uh, format is, or this format is handy if you want to just directly see 
at what at uh, at the first sight what the DC gain is. So if I now simplify this a little bit further, so I will have uh, GS that will be 500 times S plus 20 for the zero S plus one and then S plus 100. And this is actually the situation for this example. As you can see, again, we use the asymptotic lines to determine our break frequencies. And if there are any, you can use your DC gain and also set up your transfer function, use this um, standard template. All right, this is our second example. I will continue with different examples in a different form for the, about this subject, because this is not always uh, clear when and how you set up this uh, transfer function from a body plot. So I'll see you next time and take care. And if you have, of course, questions again, just place it in the comment section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Have a nice day.